Hello, Conway. Welcome to our Just Talk series. My name is Shawana Rogers. I'm the Diversity and Economic Development Coordinator for the City of Conway. So, Just Talk is a new program that features city information and news from our city officials and department heads to help the citizens of Conway be informed about what's going on in city government. So, I'm pretty excited today. Our topic of discussion will be Roundabout Streets. So joining me today is Mr. Finley Vinson. He is the director and engineer for our transportation department. Welcome, Finley. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. We are glad to have you here. So I have a few questions for you, and I'm excited about it. So you kind of let us know what's going on in transportation, roundabout streets here in Conway. So my first question will be, tell me a bit about yourself and your position in the city of Conway. Yeah, sure thing. So... Uh, I have worked for the city for a little over 10 years. Um, I am a native of Arkansan. Uh, I grew up, born and raised here, lived here my whole life. Awesome. Um, went to Hendricks College, graduated there in 2000, uh, and then went to the University of Arkansas. I uh, got a master's in transportation engineering, and uh, I've been married for 19 years to my wife, Erica. And we have three kids. We've got a 14-year-old girl, a nine-year-old boy, and a newborn baby, surprise baby. <laughs> and uh, so she's our plot twist. Oh, cool. Um, very excited to have her, obviously. Uh, I am, as you said, I'm the director of the transportation department, and I also serve as the uh, city engineer for the city of Conway. Uh, I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Arkansas, as well as a professional transportation planner, a professional tra traffic operations engineer, a lead accredited professional, and a certified floodplain manager. So all the questions that we need answered, you will be able to get them for us. Let's go with most. <laughs> most. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you've been around about these neck of the woods for a while. I mean, Hendricks College graduate. That's right. And so that's pretty exciting to know. Ten years in the city of Conway. Yes, when you said you've been married 19 years, I'm like, he doesn't even look that old. But, hey, that's, that's just me. I won't disclose my exact age, but I am over 40. Okay, I'm not even going to tell that much. I'm going to leave it up for guessing. <laughs> so, in the transportation department and overseeing the transportation department, what would be something interesting that the average citizen wouldn't know that could be helpful? So, I think probably the most helpful piece of information that I try to give people actually has more to do with drainage than transportation, which is obviously a you know, a large part of what we do at the transportation department. Right. Uh, as the city engineer, we also oversee uh, the, uh, we're responsible for floodplain management within the city of Conway, uh, and um, we administer the local NFIP program, National Floodplain Insurance Program. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not uncommon for people to find out that their home didn't used to be in a flood zone and it now is in a flood zone, which can be confusing to people because it doesn't seem like that's the sort of thing that ought to change. But right. as maps are updated, sometimes those things can change. And generally when people contact me, it's because uh, they want to try to get out of, of the requirement to buy the flood insurance. And my advice to them is always don't try to get out of that requirement. If somebody thinks that you need flood insurance, or even if they think you might need flood insurance, if a homeowner has the opportunity to buy flood insurance through the NFIP, which is a federally regulated program, mm -hmm. I advise they always take advantage of that. That's not the sort of thing that you want to get out of. That's the sort of thing that is an opportunity if you live in a flood zone and you want to take advantage of. Uh, for If uh, somebody lives in a flood zone and owns a, a home for the course of a 30-year mortgage, there is at least a 25% chance that their home will flood during that time. And it could be more depending on the propensity of flooding in that area. Furthermore, if, if, uh, if somebody does not live in a flood zone, or let me say that differently, 20% uh, of all flooding occurs outside of a flood zone. Wow. So I encourage people, even if they aren't in a regulated floodplain, mm -hmm. uh, if you think you live in an area that's prone to flooding, go try to find flood insurance through the private marketplace. It is often well worth it. So basically, you, you'd rather people be safe than sorry. Definitely. You know, I'd rather have the coverage and not need it than to need it and not have it. So yes. that's good, good information. 
I do have another question, a few more questions. So with Conway, we're known as the city of colleges, but we have also gained another name, the city of roundabouts. That's right. So everybody wants to know, one, how many roundabouts do we have in the city of Conway? And two, where did the idea of roundabouts come from? Well, the first roundabout in Conway was put out in, in, in 2005, which was before my time. But, you know, I think Conway has been known for decades as a progressive place and, and an educated place. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's as a result of the fact that we're a college town or the quality of industry that we have here, but uh, Conway residents are smart people. Yes. And when we put in our first roundabout in 2005, uh, the population in Conway saw the benefit, and uh, it was met with widespread appeal and, and approval, uh, and, which is not always the case. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of other cities around the nation have tried putting in roundabouts, and they were very unpopular. Uh, but I'm really proud as, of the citizens of Conway because they saw the safety benefits and the operational benefits. And because they were so widely accepted, we were able to put in a lot more. So we just opened our 28th. I believe. Oh, and wow. uh, so we have more roundabouts than anywhere else in the state. Uh, you know, there are a lot of other cities that are catching on uh, and have seen what we've been able to accomplish and understand the safety benefits. Uh, and as more and more people catch on, we're going to see more and more roundabouts throughout the nation. But I think we'll probably always be known as the city of roundabouts because of the fact that we have been the progressive leaders in transportation safety. I, for one, I enjoy it. Um, at first, I was a little hesitant. I remember when the first one went in on um, Hark Rider by Hendricks College. Mm -hmm. But I also remember how traffic used to be backed up there for the longest. And now it's just like you kind of zoom on through it. So once you get the hang of it, it's pretty, pretty nice. So, so what would you say the, the biggest benefit of it? I know you talked about safety. Um, as a huge benefit in operations, were that, those two were the were the highest? Is that is that? Yeah, I would definitely say that safety is without question the largest benefit of a roundabout. Uh, more than half, or at least half, of all traffic accidents occur at an intersection. So intersections are a primary location where a traffic engineer can apply their focus and try to improve the safety of a roadway network. Um, and roundabouts are much safer than all other types of traditional intersections, specifically with respect to serious accidents. Roundabouts have a 90% lower fatality rate than all other types That's awesome. of intersections. So yeah, so literally whenever we, every, for every roundabout we open, we're saving lives. Uh, and, uh, and, and even serious accidents, you know, even just property only, property damage only accidents, those typically go down in a roundabout. But, um, you know, even if nobody's in a traditional uh, intersection, uh, a serious crash, even if it doesn't kill anybody, it can be debilitating sometimes. And, and, but those, those types of crashes go down uh, by three quarters uh, typically. And so, uh, yeah, safety is definitely number one. But operational benefits uh, are also huge. Um, during peak hours, uh, most people, as you mentioned on Hark Rider, I still remember, I was here when they opened mm -hmm. the one on Hark Rider, and I remember the day they took down the signal, and the queue was backed up on Hark Rider uh, almost to Oak Street, and when they took the signal down, within a few minutes the queue was gone, and it's never come back to that degree. I agree. Um, uh, so, you know, there, uh, there's a real advantage during peak traffic, but there's also a, a real efficiency advantage during off-peak times mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, nobody likes, nobody, they call them stoplights for a reason, right? You know, in, our, in my industry, they call them traffic signals, but people call them stoplights, stoplights. and there's a reason yeah. for that because nobody likes stopping, especially when there's nobody around, right? you know, which is kind of the nature of a stoplight. It takes them a while to rotate through, and, and sometimes people are there, and they're stopped, and they feel like they don't need to be stopped, and a roundabout doesn't have that problem. So, you know, one of the things I like to be able to say about roundabouts is they always operate at 100% efficiency because you don't, if there's nobody around, you don't have to stop. Great. So we'll, we'll gladly take the additional name. We're, we are known as the city of colleges, but we'll gladly take the city of roundabouts too. So that's a good one. So uh, how many streets has the transportation department paved this year? 
Well, paving has been a little slow this year, largely because of COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody has seen uh, the impact that this pandemic has had uh, on our nation, and it's also had an impact on our industry. Uh, and so we, uh, the mayor's advice, we've been prudent this year in spending, uh, and I think that's been very wise. Thankfully, we haven't seen quite the negative impact that we it, feared that we may. So I think next year is going to be really big. Uh, but over the course of the last four years, uh, we've paved over 100 streets, uh, which is huge. And I just I did the math the other day for a council meeting and was really surprised and proud to see that how much we'd done. And we've paved over 100 lane miles uh, in the city mm -hmm. of Conway, which is really incredible in just four years' time. Awesome. So what is your favorite thing about your transportation department? Um, well... You know, th I think the the thing that I like most about m my department is probably the people I work with. Um, awesome. I've I've hired hired a really good team of engineers uh, that I'm really proud of. Uh, I've got a great superintendent, Jacob Reynolds, who uh, is my right hand man. I couldn't do the job without him. Um, I chose transportation as an industry uh, because it connects people. You know, we live in a very car-centric society. Part of that is because the, the youth of our nation, so much of our nation was oh built uh, around transportation, and we really can't operate as, as a nation without efficient transportation. It's central to people's lives. You know, again, with the pandemic, we've seen what it does to people mm -hmm. when we all have to stay home and can't leave, and, uh, and, and you know, transportation is just so central to Americans' lives, and I like being a part of that. Um, uh, you know, it's also about opportunity. Uh, you know, an, an efficient, equitable transportation system provides opportunities to people not just to visit family and friends, but also things like job opportunities that they wouldn't have otherwise if it right. weren't for the efficient transportation system that we have. And then lastly, uh, it's about safety. You know, we've talked about safety a lot, but, uh, you know, that, that's always central to everything I do. Every decision I make uh, is always prioritized based on safety. Uh, you know, I'm very proud to work on in the transportation industry, and I love it. Um, but it's one thing that's really sad is that uh, it's also dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, you know, within a certain age group, uh, kind of middle-aged, uh, people are more likely to die behind the wheel than anywhere else. Okay. Um, and, and so with that knowledge, I... I strive to make our transportation system in Conway as safe as possible, and, and I pride myself in making it safer every year than, a year than the year before. You guys are doing a great job, Finley. So thank you, thank you, and thank your team for putting so much hard work into the city of Conway to make sure that we are safe and that our city is operational. Um, and I'm sure you can agree with this, looking at it, um, I've been here about 20 years now, but even looking at it in the last 10 years, it looks totally different as it relates to the roads and the streets and just different things that you all have done. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. So this roundabout wraps it up for our Just Talk session on today. Again, thank you, Finley, for joining us. We appreciate you giving us some insight on the street department. Um, so I just want to say to you guys, keep an eye out for our next Just Talk session. We will be meeting Spencer Clausen. He is the director of the City of Conway's physical plant. So if you would like to submit questions about the physical plant or um, to see what the guys are doing or you have some additional insights or thoughts that you would like for us to know, please send an email to diversity at conwayarkansas.gov. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.